On this visit inside the locker room, we take a look at a historic Montgomery College fall sports season. We'll start with women's soccer, where a once struggling program has turned around quickly under head coach Kelly Wakeman, and this year her squad shocked the state with a historic season. And men's soccer was not to be outdone. They had one of their most explosive teams in memory and racked up a truly dynamic season. And cross country kept pace too. They qualified for the Nationals for a second straight year and made quite a mark once they got there. Then it's on to women's volleyball. We'll watch them in action as they began a rebuilding process that'll pay big dividends down the road. And after so many trips to the Nationals, it figures that eventually there'd be a rebuilding year for women's tennis, and this was it. But it was still an exciting year. And then we'll meet Veronica Franklin, the new athletic director on MC's Rockville campus. All this and more on the latest edition of The Locker Room, starting now. Welcome back inside the locker room. I'm Michael Brown. My co-host Jen Edwards is on assignment. We've got a jam-packed show for you today, so let's kick it off with a look at the women's soccer team. Now those of you who followed MC women's soccer for the last few years might be a little surprised that they're the top story. I mean, after all, this is a program that has struggled mightily for the last few years. But things began to change last season when Kelly Wakeman was hired as coach. And this year, the changes were positively dramatic and historic. Here's a look. Wakeman took over right before last season began, and with no chance to really recruit and a smaller than desired roster, the team struggled through injuries and a tough schedule. But a strong finish to the season, including a better than anticipated playoff performance, provided some hope coming into this season. Wakeman expected several key players to return. Initially, I came in thinking I was going to have some definite returning players that really had some star power. I had two of my captains returning. Um, they both got postseason honors. My leading scorer I knew was coming back. Well, things began to fall apart a little bit piece by piece, and I really only have one girl on my roster that played last year. But that's life at the community college level. You can just never be certain who will return from year to year. So Wakeman went to work building a new roster, spending countless hours on the phone. So I thought, I, you know, I was definitely facing some tough times at the beginning of the year and just got out there and worked. Wakeman's hard work off the field lured a core group of players to begin preseason practice. All the while, Wakeman prepared them to play in the tough Maryland Juco Conference. And that core group just worked really hard for me. So I thought, I need to get these girls a little tougher. Um, they were in kind of a very nice group, so I'm like, you guys, you're going to face a whole new ball game out here with the junior college because it's much more aggressive than high school. What resulted from the hard work both on and off the field was the most talented Montgomery College women's soccer roster in years. I think we just have a lot of good players. I mean, honestly, there's a whole element of skill that just a lot of players have played club, a lot of players have played varsity, there's a lot of experience. The skill is great. Um, it's just a matter of having it all come together. That coming together process began when the game started, and soon contributions came from every spot on the roster. Their offense developed into an explosive force that scored goals in bunches. The defense aggressively clamped down on opponents, but it takes more than skilled players to bring a team together. I think the fact that we're committed is the most important thing. We're just committed no matter what. We come out 110% each, every game. And uh, we communicate a lot, which is, I think is very important as a team. And as we're getting further and further into our games, we're starting to get, um, we're starting to work together a lot more. I think like our heart, I think um, the endurance, I think um, everything just comes into one. Like, um, I think it's everything. I think, I don't know, I, I think, I just think that I just love how the team is just coming together and becoming a one and just, taking it and giving it their all and just um, believing that we can do it, you know. Another key to success this season was the goalkeeper play of Ana Santiago. Despite never having played the position, she volunteered for the job when last year's keeper didn't return. The coaches quickly brought her up to speed. Tremendously. Everything from school, from balancing my schedule, from just trying, coming out here, putting everything aside when you step on this field to actually just focus overcoming fear of the ball hitting you, of you getting hit by a person technique, like um, when to step out, your angles. 
And the combination of talent, chemistry, and contributions from top to bottom started producing win after win, including a huge victory over defending national champion Catonsville and a big one over longtime rival Howard. I think Howard, we all just played together really well. We wanted it for our coach because she's always, she wants to beat them. When we played Howard, um, that was the biggest game to coach. We didn't just raise the number of goals we had, but we dominated that game. The deluge of early season wins were gratifying, but they also brought attention and challenges for the Knights. Well, so this year, the target is much bigger. That's what I told the girls after the Howard game. You guys have a target on your backs now. People are going to notice them, and they're going to have to learn to deal with that challenge in and of itself. The players responded to Wakeman's warnings, and they reeled off a long winning streak and found themselves atop the Maryland JUCO rankings. They also led the state in all sorts of offensive and defensive categories. And when the postseason loomed, they were ready for that, too. The games to come now is just like we've been so good at it, like like we've been pushing it. It's like we want it, you know. This year, I guess it's night's time to shine, and you know, we, we just want it that bad. If we bring our A game and every girl plays her best game, there's not a team around here that we can't beat. It's just a matter of will it happen. And that's why I push them. That's why I go a little overboard sometimes because I see that potential, and it would kill me as a coach to have that perspective of, well, we could have if we would have only. The team rolled into the postseason ranked first in Maryland JUCO and in the top 10 nationally, and they did not disappoint, winning the Region 20 championship, knocking off longtime rival Howard in the final. It was a close game. Howard played very well, and I believe it was 0-0 at halftime. And it was in the second half that we just wore them down and seemed to, uh, seemed to break free. And, our first goal was truly just a beautiful, one of the best goals I've seen all year. McKenna Smet just dribbled past a couple people right side of the field, rocketed one, and uh, we went nuts. And that was kind of a breaker. It was such a close game. So it was a great feeling. The girls did play one of their best games of the year. From there, it was on to the districts, where a win would have sent them to the national championships. So we played that first round against Oxford. Uh, they scored first, um, and we responded. And that was that 1-1 battle for a long time. They had some chances. We probably had more chances than they even did and um, just couldn't put the ball in the back of the net. You know, we had one defensive mistake where they were able to capitalize on that, and they put it in for a 2-1. Um, but we fought them hard till the very last minute, and uh, the girls were disappointed, but nobody could take away the season we had that Region 20 championship. And after a season like this, the honors came pouring in. Most wins in school history for women's soccer, two first-team All-American and two first-team All-Maryland JUCO selections in Lily Trujillo and Julie Bowers. Lena Orbe was named second-team All-Maryland JUCO. They had five players in the top 10 in scoring statewide, Trujillo, Orbe, Claudia Guzman, Julia Baker, and Masha Rutherford and Ana Santiago was the top goalkeeper in the state and also nationally ranked. I think we will always remember that game and use it to fuel us in the offseason. That's what I've always encouraged my players. Use your, your losses, anything negative that happens to fuel you in the offseason to prepare for next year. We did get that Region 20 championship. It is only the second in women's soccer history at this school. We'll be ready for next year and we are one of the top teams in the nation.